we ask that no one record the webinar without our explicit written permission. And lastly, no one has permission to quote any of the comments or questions made by the webinar audience or our panelists. All members of the audience are currently on mute. If you have a question, please use the Q&A box at the end and there will be a large period of questions so that you can get your questions answered. Access to the box is found on the lower right hand side of your screen. I'd like to introduce Idris Steen, who will in turn introduce our panel and host session. Idris is the Associate Director of Marketing and responsible for CSI's Marketing Outreach. He's been with CSI for three years and prior to joining CSI, he was employed as a major bank where he held both branch and head office positions. So I'll turn over the session to Idris. Thank you, Marie. And thank you everyone for joining this webinar. I'd like to begin by introducing our group of expert panelists, and then I'll get into today's agenda. So first we have Rui Bredo. Rui Bredo works for CSI. Uh, he's a director of business development and works very closely with um, a lot of the different banks. Then we have Kelsey Catcher. She's a senior talent acquisition partner at CIBC. And Shannon Mills. Shannon Mills is also a senior talent acquisition partner at CIBC. Finally, we have Timothy Ho, who is a director, practice standards, national sales and practice excellence at CIBC. Next slide, please. All right, we have a very uh, interesting agenda today. Um, we're gonna start off with Marie, who's gonna be speaking about how CSI can really help you get started. And then she's gonna speak a little bit about banking career progression. And then we'll have Rui, who's gonna share a little bit more of an overview of how the banking industry looks like, not only in the branches, but also in other areas. And also talk about some of the opportunities that exist. Then we're gonna turn it over to Kelsey and Shannon, who will provide a perspective from um, a talent uh, a, a talent perspective on how banks recruit for entry level roles. And we'll also hear from them about how they recruit for um, other roles that exist um, in the banks. And then we'll cap things off with, uh, with Timothy Ho, who will share his, his story. So Tim, Timothy started off in the branch um, he, he worked his way up and now he is where he is at, at CIBC. So we have a lot of great topics for today. And then we'll, um, as the webinar uh, progresses, we'll take a note of questions that do come in and we'll have a, an allocation of time at the end to go over those questions. So I'll now turn it back over to Marie. Marie will be talking about how CSI can really help you get started, as well as what career progression in banking may look like. Thank you very much, Idris. So let's talk about how you can get started and where you can go. If you go to the next slide. Um, as you can see, there are many paths, uh, education paths that you can take, but it all starts with one of two licensing requirements, either the Canadian Securities course or the Investment Funds of Canada course. And those two courses will lead you into the banking world. They are the basic license that you you need for client folks facing roles in the in the financial services industry. From either of those two roles, you're able to go on and do financial planning. So financial planning and financial advice giving is one of the roles that you can take on. And there are a number of courses you can take to get either a certificate or a designation in financial planning. You can also go the estate route if you want to take care of people who are planning the passage of their wealth on to the next generation or taking care of children uh, who are handicapped and need and need to have financial support. And therefore, the estate plan trust advice uh, path is a path for you. You may also be interested in uh, investment uh, and portfolio management, in which case there's a path up through the um, certified investment manager or the certified um, international wealth manager. Uh, both courses uh, will get you into the area of um, investments, but they, they all start with the CSC or the IFC. So next slide. Let's talk a little bit about the Investment Funds in Canada course and the Canadian Securities course, which one to take. 
The investment funds in Canada is the base course that will lead you into several areas in the bank, particularly in the retail banking side. If you want to go further and if you want to have more knowledge and more confidence, then we recommend the Canadian Securities course. So the Canadian Securities course is the ticket into all areas of the bank and will provide you with the kind of information competence and confidence that you will need to be able to provide financial advice to clients. And it is definitely required if you're going to go into the investment advisory world. So both are, are very much the place you start. So if you're wondering what's the one course you need to get started on, it will either be the Investment Funds in Canada course or the Canadian Securities course. Next slide. So what do these courses lead you to? Well, you can start a career and our, our guest panelists from CIBC will be talking a lot more about how you get into these roles and what these roles mean. I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview. You can get start your career at the branch level as a customer service advisor, a representative, a universal banker, or a customer services representative. And that will allow you to meet clients and understand how the bank works. You may move into a more senior roles after that, and there are many avenues you can go into in private banking, in financial advisory services, as a financial consultant. You can also get into the world of mortgage advising or commercial banking, commercial lending, or go up the management route and become a manager um, within the bank. There are other options for you on the institutional side, uh, institutional and corporate, but there's also, which Rui will explain, the middle and back office where you'll do more of the processing or uh, other areas. So there are many Serve. There are many certificates and designations you can take, and CSI is here really to accompany you through your financial services career and journey. So you start with your, your basic licensing, either the CSC or the IFC, and then you move on and you can move up to financial planning, you can go into investment management, you can go into uh, areas of state planning, and all of those areas will provide certificates. So as your career progresses, we will simply give you courses that will allow you to do these various um, roles. And so we offer a number of, of specialized courses and career paths to allow you to develop your roles. I'm gonna pass it back to Idris, for the next part of the webinar. Thank you, Marie. Um, I'm gonna now turn it over to Rui uh, Bredo. Um, he's gonna provide a more detailed overview of the banking industry, including um, a lot of the roles that are available. Thank you, Idris. Um, uh, next slide, please. Sorry. A bank is made up of many different units. Uh, the four I will be reviewing with you today are at the highest level, but will help frame the key areas that you should be aware of as you consider joining the financial services industry. If I start with the bottom indicated as retail individual, this is often the most popular and recognized business unit. Most of you will know that is the traditional retail banking branches, often seen as a physical building. Uh, and for some, mostly today, a mobile app on your phone, or even a web page. Um, uh, now, most are not aware of all the different career opportunities in this space, and they often overlook retail banking because they associate it with the idea of a junior or a traditional role. If we think about what Marie mentioned in her first slide, career opportunities, most people get their start here. Uh, but where they begin and where they take their career is often, it's, it's often a surprising journey, as you will hear from Tim later in our presentation. Um, now, once you qualify for a career in retail banking, it can lead into a number of strategic roles, uh, often growing in requirements and complexity. Uh, some of the roles that you may know or might or may not know include financial planning, bank management, wealth management, small business, being part of a mobile advice team, such as a mortgage team, or even a, um, an investment team that, uh, that meets with clients on their, own, uh, on their own time. Other areas are private banking, um, these are just a few opportunities available. The list is obviously much longer if you take the time to look. Um, the one thing I do want to point out is, as, as Marie mentioned, this is the most um, traditional area where most people get their start. I actually got my start here in retail banking. I actually started as, uh, as uh, a teller. I stayed as a teller, moved into personal banking, then I moved into financial planning, then I moved into bank management, and then I ended my career as a mobile mortgage specialist. Um, what I want to point out is that some people will stay their full careers here, and I stayed there 15 years 
before I joined CSI, and I would probably still be in this space. Others may take a different approach and join one of the other uh, business units that I'll describe to you. If we move uh, from retail banking into the unit just behind retail banking called institutional corporate, um, this area is still in the client banker facing space, but it's much more complex due to the size of the business deals, the risk associated with the transactions, the businesses that form the client, the industry, as well as the economic environment. This business unit manages the relationships with large corporations and government organizations. Individuals working in this space are challenged to help manage the short and long-term financing requirements for these, or for these type of organizations. Some of, the, some of the risk associated with these organizations can be in the billions. Consider a business like IBM, where they are constantly expanding. Now consider the economic environment that we find ourselves in today, and imagine how that impacts the business's cash flow their ability to repay your debts, and also to kind of find funds to pay salaries. Roles in this business, business unit are good for individuals who like to work on complex deals. They like that corporate takeover um, strategy, and they like to do a lot of risk modeling. We move into the next slide. So the next area I wanna introduce you to is that middle office. Um, this business line is also referred to as head office in some banking institutions. It's made up of a number of different roles. Some are easily relatable to, to banking and some may not be top of mind when you think of banking. Traditional roles in this space revolve around governance, compliance, and bank and employee risk. One of its priorities is to ensure regulatory integrity is in place for customers and shareholders. Some of the roles in this space that may not be as immediately identifiable with banking include roles in marketing information technology, computer programming, software engineer, web development, and even legal roles. Obviously the list I've shared is limited, uh, but I will confirm that there are many more unique roles within this business unit. As you build your background in banking, support for these types of roles uh, will also grow, and you may actually be considering a, a career change from the retail branch into, into some of these, uh, these available opportunities. For those who are joining us on this call that may not be part of a finance program, I hope that this is something that you can kind of think about when you're looking on um, online and, and, and for job opportunities, is the consideration that the banks do have a lot of different roles and you can have many different careers by just joining the bank, not necessarily having to stay within, within one business unit. Uh, finally, I wanna talk about the, um, uh, the business unit, which is uh, called the back office. Um, this department is often uh, thought of as the machine that gets things done. This department looks after the movement of funds and the settlement of transactions. Now, you can imagine how many transactions a bank manages daily and the number of innovative strategies required to get things done in an extremely short amount of time. This unit normally provides job opportunities in a number of different administrative roles, as well as very strategic roles in the area of process flow management, automation, business line efficiencies, logistics management, digital settlements, FinTrack tracking. So FinTrack is the, um, is the uh, required government requirement for anti-money laundering. And that is a part of uh, a tracking requirement that the bank must provide. There's also fraud, cash and cash management. Again, the, again, as previously mentioned, these are just a few career opportunities waiting for you when you're thinking about the bank. These are just four units that, that I've mentioned at a very high level. What I would like to ask is if you wanna learn more about the different jobs available, please visit us at csi.ca and look at our career map where we kind of dive a little bit more deeper into the available roles and the, and the, the more detailed aspects of each opportunity that you can look at. And I'll turn that back over to Idris. Yeah, thanks, Ray. That was great. Uh, I do see uh, quite a few questions coming in, just asking about different roles um, that exist in, in, in the financial services sector and, and how to get there. So I think, Rui, you did a great job to, to touch on some of these things. So some questions came in about, you know, if I want to become an underwriter or, you know, I, I want to go into mortgages or I want to go into process automation. So I guess I just want to reinforce that when you do take the step, and I think Kelsey and Shannon will touch on it later, and, and you actually work in the branch world, you have to interact with all the different stakeholders at the branch, right? So if you're working on a client's investments, you'll you'll speak to um, you know those folks. If you're submitting somebody's lending application or mortgage application, 
you know, you're interacting with those people and you're looking at risk, um, you know, uh, if you're processing transactions, you deal with clearing and, 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 and many different things. So I guess I just wanted to reinforce that, you know, getting your foot in the door with, you know, a licensing course will get you into the, the, the branch. And then from there, it can open up many doors and you'll hear more from uh, Shannon, Kelsey and Tim on this point um, as we progress through the webinar. Um, so I'm going to turn the session over back over, uh, sorry, over to Kelsey and Shannon, uh, and they're going to be speaking about how banks actually recruit for these various level entry roles. And they'll also touch a little bit about um, other roles um, in, in the head office and, and other uh, sectors of the bank. So pass it over to you, uh, Kelsey and Shannon. Thank you, Idris. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I just want to take a moment to introduce myself and my colleague, Shannon Mills. Uh, we are both senior talent acquisition partners here at CIBC, and we both support the personal and business banking portfolio. So both of us do have experience hiring and recruiting for the retail side, as well as some head office roles in personal and business banking. So please feel free to ask us any questions in the chat or connect with us on LinkedIn, and we are happy to, to answer any questions that you might have. But right now, I just want to take a moment to go over a few opportunities that we have at CIBC on the retail side that are fantastic positions to start your career at CIBC. So there's three specific positions that I want to go over today um, to start off. So the first one is our customer services representative position. Uh, so this position here, as soon as you walk into the branch, you're the first point of contact. You're the one that clients see and will go up to you and ask you some questions. So what we're looking for is we're looking for someone who has customer service experience, who can build relationships. Um, who has good teamwork and partnering uh, skills. We're looking for someone who is uh, attention uh, detail oriented, results oriented, and who can take initiative. So in this position here, like I said, you're the first point of contact. When the clients come in, you want to create a friendly and positive client experience. You want to listen to them, understand their needs, and see what you can do to help them. Um, and while doing so, you might do some uh, transactions, balance cash holdings, make recommendations, and of course, um, it is very confidential and keeping the client's privacy as well. And then if we can move to the next slide, the next position that I want to talk about is the financial services representative position. Um, so I want to mention that this position here is only a full time. We only do hire full time opportunities, whereas the customer services representative position, we do have part time and full time opportunities. Now, the main difference that I would say with this position here in, in the financial services representative role is you are giving some advice to clients. Um, so we do require that you do have your CSC or your IFIC for this position here. So what we're looking for in an ideal candidate, we are looking for someone who has that customer service experience as well, some sales experience, um, someone who can really build those relationships because you will be working with your clients and building those relationships. So we are looking for someone who will book those meetings, be proactive, plan daily sales targets, weekly targets, um, and of course, promoting a variety of products and services that we offer at the bank. So in this role here, you will be meeting with clients on an ongoing basis, um, regular clients, and you will be building those relationships. Now we do have one other position. Um, it's a universal banker role. So similar to the financial services representative position, this position here, we do hire full-time only, and you do require your IFIC or your CSC as you will be giving financial advice. So it's a little bit of a hybrid between the CSR position, the customer services representative, and the financial services representative position. So you are that first point of contact when clients come in. You can do the banking transactions with them as well, but you also can give them advice as you would if an FSR. So it's a really cool position offered at our advice centers. Now, if we can move to the next slide, um, I just want to talk a little bit about career opportunities within the retail banking sector. So as I mentioned, the three positions on the side here, the CSR, financial services representative or universal banking roles are very um, fantastic opportunities to start your career at CIBC. You don't need many licenses for this, which is great. Um, like I said, for the universal banker or the financial services representative, you do require your CSC or your IFIC. And moving forward in your career, if you do want to stay on the retail side, you do require your IFIC or your CSC for these um, banking positions here in the blue that you can see. So for example, if you want to be a financial advisor, a financial planning consultant, you're of course going to have to take different licensing and certifications. But at the end of the day, the foundation to these positions here is obtaining your CSC or your IFIC. Now, I want to pass it over to Shannon now, who's going to discuss some of our corporate positions, some of our head office roles, and she's going to touch upon how the CSC and the IFIC um, and starting your career on the retail side can benefit you moving into the corporate side as well. 
Great, thank you so much, Kelsey, and welcome everyone. We're very excited to be speaking to you today. Um, so like Kelsey said, you build the foundation from these positions, whether it's your the CSR role, universal banker, financial service representative, Many of the individuals, as you've heard on this call, as well as individuals that we work with, have started in these roles. Myself as an example, I started as a CSR. I built the foundation, understood the different lines of businesses that I wanted to go into, and I was able to chat and network with my colleagues and other individuals in the banking centers um, to get a better understanding of where I wanted to grow my career. So with that, um, Kelsey and I both hire for our head office roles. We have different head office um, portfolios. So just to touch on a few of them, we have our business controls. So that would be risk and regulatory, governance and controls, compliance, everything that supports the frontline teams. And you'll notice with many of our head office roles, they do support our frontline teams because that is the foundation of our organization. So that would be business controls. We also have our analytics department. We have digital, different teams within digital. So we have our frontline tools and enablement team. Um, we also have products and payments, strategy and transformation, national sales. The list does go on and it's very interesting to learn about all these different portfolios. Um, so just to touch on a few of the roles because each portfolio has similar roles. You'll hear consultant roles, but what does the consultant role entail? Well, when you look at our job descriptions, um, I know one of the major questions that we are receiving today, as well as on a daily basis, is what certification do I require? What kind of programming is good to have for these roles? Well, in all of our job descriptions, we always make sure to input which programs we're looking for, what type of experience we're looking for. And it gives you an idea, maybe you're not ready for that role at the moment, whether it's a consultant role, maybe it's an analyst role, you just look at that as the big picture. That's where you want to grow your career or perhaps you want to grow your career. So start to look into those positions, even if you're not ready for them right now. And it gives you an understanding of what kind of certification that we look for for those positions. So like I said, some of the roles that you'll see um, that we have posted would include business analysts, consultants, product owners, UX designers, loss management, compliance, management roles, um, regulatory risk, it goes on and on. So just to touch on a few of like programs that we look for, depending on the line of business, again, look at those job descriptions. Um, this goes into further detail of those programs. So, you know, you might be familiar with Microsoft as an example, right? Um, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Outlook. Those are some of the skills that we look for. And then on top of that, we look for that continued learning as well. So if we could go to the next slide, please. I'm gonna go over our recruitment process. Now this is very standardized. This is for all of our roles at CIBC. Um, it doesn't matter if you're looking into a head office role as opposed to a retail role. Um, this is the recruitment process that you will be going through. So the best thing is to join an information session such as the one that you've joined today. Um, so you get to learn about the different roles. You get to learn these tips and tricks to then proceed to your application. So like I said, that would be our job postings. You can go to our career page um, and see what kind of roles we currently have posted. Additionally, you can add Kelsey, myself on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great tool to look at the open roles because sometimes we will post about them um, and then we can have conversations from there so that you don't even have to apply to the role if you're not ready, but we can help you with your career journey. So that goes into the phone interview. So let's say you put in an application for a role and you move forward for the phone interview. That would be with someone in talent acquisition, such as Kelsey or myself. Um, in this conversation, we just wanna get an understanding of where you are in your career, how you wanna grow your career, how we can help that ambition become a reality. Um, and then, you know, give you some tips, tricks, answer any questions that you have. It's a great conversation. My favorite part of the recruiting process, I would say. Um, and then from there, you would move into a hiring manager interview if you are selected. Now, depending on the role for entry level roles, you go through the interview with the talent acquisition partner and then the hiring manager. For your head office roles, sometimes you'll have two rounds of hiring manager interviews, but we would let you know that 
in the initial conversation, right? So hiring manager interview, we go into a little bit more detail. The hiring manager wants to get an understanding of why you're interested in the position, who you are, how we can help grow your career. And this is a good time for me to mention as well, at CIBC, we do have a policy that you do have to remain in your current role for one year before you move on to the next role. There are exceptions, there are opportunities that come up, but I want you to just keep that in mind. So going back to what Kelsey said, if you're looking for a part-time role at the moment and you go into a client service representative role, keep in mind, um, you do have to stay in that role for one year. You know, if you wanna go into a full-time client service representative, that's a, diff a different story there. Um, that can change at any time. Now, full-time is 37 and a half hours at CIBC, part-time. You'll discuss that with the hiring manager. Now, from there, you go into the hiring decision. Uh, that is on our hiring manager. So they take um, they take an input on who they want to move forward with and offer the position to. They'll consult with their talent acquisition partner for that. Um, and that's when you move into an offer stage. So we have a verbal offer. So we'll go over the details of what offer you are be being presented with. Um, you get to make a decision if you accept the offer, if you have any negotiations, questions, anything like that. And then once you accept, then we provide you with the formal offer letter. So you'll have a formal start date, salary, all of those fun details. Um, from that offer, we initiate our background screening checks. That's with our corporate security team. So, you know, education, experience, all of those reference checks get completed. And our corporate security team takes about three weeks to complete all of their checks. So the reason why I say that is when you think of a start date from the time that you receive your offer, think about three weeks out um, for you to be able to start with CIBC. And then from there where it says hire, you're welcome to CIBC, you have your onboarding complete and you get to start with us. So when we look at this recruiting process overall, we typically look at about a month of a process going through everything here. But it always starts with that initial conversation and that initial interest in how you want to grow your career. So that is why you have joined us today. Um, that wraps up everything on my end. So thank you so much. And we'll definitely be answering questions later on. So I'll pass it back over to Idris. Yeah. Shannon, I'm just going to actually turn a question back to you because there's a number of people with the same yeah, question. Absolutely. So, um, a lot of our attendees are, are saying that you know they're in progress of completing a licensing course. Mm -hmm. um, they have some understanding of the financial service industry, but because they're in school or recent graduates, they may not have customer service experience that's typically required to get their foot in the door. So what advice mm -hmm. would you give to these individuals who have completed their licensing courses and are struggling to, to land a, a first interview? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I mean, I've been in the those shoes before as well. Um, I know sometimes it can feel difficult, but I want you to understand that the more you connect, whether it's on LinkedIn, you know, whether it's your applications going into different roles, the more that you connect with individuals, the more opportunities that will be there for you. Um, going back to if you are completing your licensing, we do have different policies. So if you're close to finishing um, your licensing, then there might be an exception to have you join us within 30 days of having that completed. So let's say you start with us, but you still have a few more days left until you graduate. Um, that is okay. We have those different uh, policies. So you'll, you'll chat with your talent acquisition partner about that. Um, other like tips and tricks that I could probably provide, you know, if, right now you don't have to have customer service experience. It is great, but present yourself and why you're interested in the position, right? Customer service even comes down to the interactions that you have on a daily basis, who you are as a person. Are you caring? Are you wanting to help others? Of course you are because you're looking to get into a role that supports that. So I want you to really tie down on that, right? look at your resume, you know, any accomplishments, achievements that you have, put that on your resume. Why are you proud of your career and how you've gotten to where you are at the moment? Put that on your resume, put that on LinkedIn, explain that in your chats with either the hiring managers, partners that you're speaking with, everything like that. 
Um, those are just a few different uh, ideas, tips and tricks that I could provide. Um, hopefully that answers some questions. But again, I mean, if you still require support or questions, connect with Kelsey and I, and we're happy to help. Thanks so much, Kelsey and Shannon. Um, and now I wanna take the opportunity to turn the session over to uh, Timothy Ho. Uh, he began his career um, uh, in the branch and he actually uh, did both his um, investment funds in Canada and Canadian Securities course. And he's now a uh, director of practice standards uh, for the National Sales and Practice Excellence at CIBC. So without further ado, I'll pass it over to Tim. Yeah, thanks, Idris. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Tim, as Idris said. I'm the Director uh, of Practice Standards at CIBC Personal and Business Bank. I've been with the bank for 14 years, and I'm currently responsible for ensuring national consistency and excellence across our entire branch workforce. And uh, it's, it's my pleasure and a privilege to be speaking with all of you today. Um, first and foremost, because I clearly remember being in your shoes. At the time, I was actually a uh, second year undergraduate student at the Telford School of Management at the University of Ottawa. I was completing my uh, Bachelor of Commerce degree, and I was working a variety of, of jobs outside of the banking industry. I was, I was a waiter. I worked in retail. I was uh, a DJ. I, I didn't have any career plans yet. And uh, I'll be honest with everyone, when I first got the idea to apply uh, to a job at the bank, which was... Uh, at the time, actually, my my mom's idea, because she worked uh, at a different bank as a teller, I wasn't looking at it as a career. It was, um, you know, it seemed like a job that sounded good. Like, hey, yeah, I work, I work at a bank. But I had no clue that uh, there was such a fulfilling career journey ahead of me. And sometimes, you know, you don't realize the richness of an experience until you've fully experienced it yourself. I uh, started my career journey as a part-time teller in a small local banking center in uh, Orleans, Ontario, and I quickly realized how much every single role at the bank helps people in their day-to-day -day lives. You don't expect that being in an entry-level role, um, but you'll see that you know people rely on you for their financial transactions, and uh, more importantly, those financial transactions represent something in their life, something important in their life. It's sending money to a loved one in need. It's getting a bank draft for that first new home. Um, I saw for the first time that, you know, this is an industry where everything you do has a sizable and real impact on people's personal or their business lives. And uh, what I also saw was that banking is very much a team sport. Every single role at a banking center uh, from the teller, which we call the uh, customer service representative that Kelsey was referencing earlier, to the financial services representative, to you know the financial advisor, the banking center leader, and other roles, those are all interconnected in helping our clients. You know, tellers, uh, the customer service representatives help identify opportunities to help clients, and maybe they'll refer them for more expert advice with an advisor, and maybe the manager then steps in to help with the more complex situation. And what I found is that there's a lot of organic mentorship that happens at CIBC. And I was, uh, you know, as I was learning more about my own role as a teller through work experience, I was also learning about how all of those other roles at the bank um, help clients. You know, how the financial services representative helps families with their day-to-day -day banking needs, like, uh, accounts, credit cards, mortgages, and mutual funds, to how our imperial service advi uh, financial advisors helped our uh, our higher net worth clients with more complex financial uh, investment advice and financial planning, to uh, how our banking center leaders are responsible for leading and managing uh, an incredibly complex business operation that is a bank. But one thing that I definitely saw in common across every single one of these roles was that you know at CIBC, we're all people that are here to help our clients. And the number of clients that still come back to me to this day, you know, years later to say, you know, wow, you, you changed my life. Those are the moments that made me realize that this is a career that I could be really passionate about. 
So what I'd like to do is uh, walk everyone through what my journey looked like. So my retail banking career uh, from the from the branch onwards to my current career here at the uh, corporate office. My retail career took me from being a customer service representative to a financial services representative to a senior financial advisor with our imperial service business. Um, so I was really able to see the full spectrum that I was just describing to you before, you know, from our most foundational day-to-day -day transactions to uh, being a trusted advisor for families who had more complex financial planning needs. And what I found was um, understanding the fundamentals of our banking center business and what clients expect from us at CIBC um, was really what inspired me to move to our corporate national office here in Toronto so that I could continue to work on making CIBC and the CIBC experience the very best it could be on an even broader scale. Uh, I moved to Toronto as a project consultant where my banking, center, uh, my banking center experience was really, really valuable because I was able to provide that client and branch perspective to my colleagues while we were working on one of the biggest people change initiatives in the history of the bank. And from there, I became a senior manager in project delivery, helping lead a team responsible for uh, the creation of an entire contact center business focused on helping our clients through the estates process. And again, that experience that I had working directly with our clients and directly with those processes at the banking center level helped me provide a lot of value when we were doing our strategy and concept. I then moved into a director role where I was responsible for supporting some of our uh, biggest programs like our, uh, our M&A expansion into the United States, as well as a major regulatory portfolio. And I've had a, a lot of fun and exciting experiences in between. Uh, that led me to my current role. And I've in, interacted with so many amazing people from different disciplines. One thing you'll discover is that it really doesn't matter, you know, what you studied in school, that doesn't lock you into a particular discipline. In fact, some of the very best business teams that I've worked with, some of the most elite business teams that I've worked with here have had uh, a mix of, you know, business grads, biology grads, arts grads, it's that diversity of thought that you bring to the table, those diverse experiences that actually create the very best teams. So I want to talk about uh, what helped me progress through my career and the competencies that you'll need to be successful, because what you'll find is whether you're in the retail banking center or at corporate office, the core fundamental competencies are the same. And there are, you know, there are very many, but I wanted to focus on three in particular today. So first, like I was saying before, the desire to help people is paramount. You'll be working with uh, a lot of clients at really important stages of their life. You know, maybe they're getting married, they're uh, buying their first home, they're, they're retiring, maybe they just had a loved one pass away. As a trusted team member of the bank, you have a role to play in all of those important life moments for our clients. Secondly, whether you're at the branch or at corporate office, the ability to communicate is incredibly important. You're communicating with clients, with your team members. It has to be done clearly. It has to be done with intent. Uh, and that's whether it's written, uh, verbal, through a, a PowerPoint presentation, getting your message across, whether it's you know, advice to a client or a pitch to a senior business executive, that's what determines the success in all of those pivotal moments in your career that are to come. And uh, lastly, the, the ambition and the desire to create success. And what I mean by that is thinking beyond yourself, you know, not just what Tim can do for Tim, but what can Tim do for everyone around him? You know, do you believe in what you're doing? Do you believe in making your clients, your team members successful? That's the mentality it takes to move through different roles in an organization. It's not about what everyone can do for you. It's about what you can do for everyone. And success will, will naturally come from that. So uh, let me leave you with a key piece of advice. Start with yourself and then expand outwards. And what do I mean by that 
you know, first make sure your own personal life is in order. Be happy, uh, physically and mentally healthy. And if you're not, you know, take the steps that you can take to make sure you're being your best self, because all of that translates into your professional career. And you want to be bringing that genuine energy into the office every single day. Secondly, whatever role you start with, uh, do absolutely everything you can to be the foremost expert in that role. If you're starting as a customer service representative, then you know be the teller that knows how to navigate that one complicated process that everyone else gets stuck on. You know, be the one that everyone wants to come ask for help from. From there, understand the roles of the team around you. You know, be curious, seek mentorship, ask questions. Um, a goalie on a hockey team still needs to understand what the forwards and the defensemen are doing. That'll really give you context, uh, not only in terms of how you can help others in your current role, but it'll also give you insight into which roles you want to personally pursue as well. And finally, understand the industry and that ecosystem around you. You know, what are the trends that are happening? What are competitors doing? Having that perspective gives context to your day-to-day -day business decisions. And, uh, you know, that's how I found CSI to be incredibly helpful as well, giving me that foundational education I needed to move forward with confidence in the banking industry. So uh, with that, you know, I, I wish everyone here tremendous success. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing all of you become the future generation of business leaders here at CIBC. And for now, Idris, I'll uh, turn it back to you. Thank you very much, Tim. That was quite the story. And uh, I think it will be very helpful for people to you know, refer back to it. And just for everyone's sake uh, and the audience, we'll have this um, recorded um, as well. Um, so thank you very much for that, Tim. Um, so, you know, uh, so thank you, Kelsey, Shannon, Tim, Rui, um, you know, for being panel members, provided some very valuable insights into the roles available in the industry and different paths to get there. Um, you know, I look at myself, uh, I also started off as a, a bank teller and, and worked as a licensed advisor. And, and I don't think that if, if I really had the chance to serve clients and really understand the different processes that I, I'd be where I am today. So, you know, um, I think all the advice that we got from these panelists is it's very important, um, you know, to get started. And, and, you know, we do have a lot, a lot of questions that have come in. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be able to answer all of them, but we will send up follow-up communication uh, to address the questions. So um, I'll do my best to get through um, as many as I can. Um, we'll, we'll start off with the first question. I think maybe Tim or, or Rui, this might be uh, towards you. Maybe Tim, you could start off with it a little bit. Um, uh, Tim, a couple questions have come in. Um, Notice that uh, you did your Canadian securities course. Um, um, while working in the branch to, to get you to a senior financial advisor? Um, was it because it was a role requirement or um, maybe if you can just uh, provide a, a little bit of an understanding for people that are unsure of you know, where to start? They see two licensing courses and does one open up more doors than the other or, or how does that work? Yeah, that, for sure. I'd be happy to answer that. I, I, so first, it was a requirement for the role that I was pursuing. Um, but what I found was I thought the, the CSC uh, was really robust in terms of what it was able to offer me uh, from a career perspective, um, in addition to being the, the primary requirement for, for many roles anyway. So from that perspective, it not only offered me a great deal of flexibility in terms of where I could navigate my career, um, but like I was saying earlier, it offered me that, that industry perspective and education that allowed me to move forward with confidence. Um, and lastly, I, I did have a fantastic experience with CSI throughout the process. So I also, you know, had confidence that, that it was the right designation for me to move forward with. Thank you. That's great. Um, the next question for Kelsey, um, or Shannon, um, a lot of, uh, individuals are asking at what point during their college or university program, um, should they start looking at um, uh, look, uh, looking at completing their licensing course? And um, other people have asked, you know, 
is it good enough for me to apply and, and count on the employer to sponsor it? Or, you know, at what point should I really take it seriously to, to start looking at completing the course? Absolutely. So, of course, completing the CAC or IFIC really does put you in a big advantage, um, you know, versus applying if you don't have it. So, if you're in university, I would recommend applying for a CSR position, a customer services representative position, because that is a part time position. Um, that is our only part time position available. So, you can, you know, get this experience, learn about the banking center and a life in the banking career while you're still in school. And while you're in the CSR role, I would recommend is a great time for you to start completing your, your um, CSC or your IFIC fix that you can move into an FSR position upon graduation. I do see that very often. Um, people are in the process of completing it while they're a CSR so that they can get promoted to an FSR position once they graduate. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Rui, um, this question's for you. Um, upon completing a licensing course, how long do, do people have uh, to land a job? And, and, and while they're doing that, Maybe can you talk a little bit about um, some additional soft skills or or other um, you know things that people should work on in addition to to their licensing course? Because I think there's a fear that if they start too early, they may expire and they may not be eligible to to land a job in the bank. So if you can talk to that, that'd be great. Yeah, um, it, it's it's a great question. I think you know. Ideally, we would like everything to last forever and, you know, not not have to worry about an expiry date. Um, unfortunately, because you're dealing with clients and you're dealing with their finances, there is a regulatory requirement that uh, that requires that an individual who completes the CSC be within um, an, a job role within two years of, of actual completion. Now, that being said, it's just a matter of how do you strategically uh, time the the completion of the course to applying for a job and you know getting hired and going through that uh, that process that uh, that Shannon had covered. Um, my recommendation would be that you consider looking at the Canadian Security Securities course or the Investment Funds in King Canada course closer to the end of your um, um, educational program, uh, maybe the last year, and then that way you've got a good two years in which to to kind of apply for a job, secure a job. And enter and enter the, the industry. Now, in addition to that, it's great that you have a finance background. If you complete the securities course, that's even better. That being said, there is a huge push in, in today's marketplace to have that, that soft skills piece and that ability to interact with an individual and a client and a client and make that relationship um, basically strong from the start. So the things that you can kind of do is consider, you know, what part-time jobs are you currently doing? And is there an opportunity to engage with uh, clients, with leaders, and kind of build that background in, in being able to carry a conversation, ask those discovery questions. Once you kind of have those two um, areas completed, then you can kind of really uh, make your resume that much more impactful when you're reaching out to, to folks such as Shannon and Kelsey, who will receive your your resume for uh, for a job opportunity. Thanks, Rui. Um, question back to Kelsey um, and or Shannon. Um, we have a lot of individuals who have uh, immigrated from other countries into Canada with previous experience in the financial services sector. Um, what advice would you would you give to them? Um, uh, we've we've heard a lot of feedback that they've applied for jobs and haven't heard back from banks. I know you you touched on the importance of networking. So what advice would you give um, to some of our, our new immigrants to Canada? Absolutely. I do see those questions coming in. Um, what I would say is please leverage that experience. Don't think that because it's out of Canada that it's not experience. We look into that experience all the time. Um, I would pretty much go back to like what I said in terms of using those achievements, the skills that you learned, um, you know, if it was your customer service experience, leverage that in your resume and bring that into why you're interested in the role that you're applying for. So when you're looking at your resume, um, going into 
like a little bit of details, tips and tricks on resume building. Uh, make sure it's organized and clean, easy to read. I know sometimes you'll hear people say, uh, make sure it's one page. Now in today's society, I mean, we see so many different resumes. I wouldn't say keep it to one page and don't leverage all of the information that you have. I typically see, you know, one to two pages is great. Um, if it's more because you have many more achievements and skills you want to display, absolutely go for more pages. Um, but, you know, make sure that you include like what you did in that position. What was your mandate? What are you proud of? Um, one thing I always say like to many of my colleagues, many of the individuals that apply for my roles, um, look at the job description, right? And at CIBC, we have different sections of our job description. One of them is um, like how you'll succeed and how you'll succeed is essentially the skills that we look for. Now they're not mandatory skills. A lot of those skills are, you know, those soft skills. Who are you as an individual? Look at what the job description says and build that into your resume, right? So start to look at, you know, if there's a lot of customer service required or let's say lots of compliance and risk that is required for the role, add that into your resume. Make sure it's obviously based on your experience, but you know, think to your experience and how you were able to use that. So let's say as an example, you're looking to get into a sales position and you have um, only CSR, so client servicing experience, that's great. Use that and in your CSR, your, your customer service days, how did you incorporate those sales? Why were you interested in those sales? Add that into your resume, not only what you did as a CSR or the customer service rep, whatever you were doing, add in a few of the skills that we're looking for as well. So there's many, many different um, tips and tricks I could share. Another one would be, you know, make sure that you have a cover letter because we do look at those um, and those get shared with our hiring manager as well. So tailor it to the position that you're interested in, right? You can have a cover letter and then, you know, tweak it for the positions that you're applying for, um, but make sure that it, it is based on the position you're applying for. Those type of resumes always stand out to us because we know that you've taken, you know, the time to look into our organization, um, you know, if you think of like the biggest piece of advice overall, I know I can go on for so much time here, but think of, you know, the question, why are you interested in working for CIBC? If I were to ask you that question, what would your response be? We understand we're a large organization. We understand it's a, it's a great organization to have on your resume, but what is it about CIBC? Like, is it, you know, the different mandates that we have, the different organizations and fundraisers that we have, you know, the career progression, you'll see it on our LinkedIn's that we've grown in our careers at CIBC. There's a reason for that, right? Because because our leaders grow us into those roles. Um, so if I ask you the question of why you're interested in CIBC, you know, make sure that your resume and your cover letter kind of indicates that, and then you have an answer for that as well, um, more than just the organization. What is it that you're passionate about? So, I mean, hopefully that answers quite a few of the questions that we've seen here, um, but definitely, you know, think of your individual career and really use that to your advantage. Right. Um, Shannon, um, sorry, I'm going to pick at you again. It looks like all the questions are for you. Um, <laughs> uh, some attendees are interested in, um, would you recommend if they see CIBC has multiple entry-level positions? So let's say that there's an FSR position in Toronto, there's one in Mississauga, but then there's a CSR position somewhere else. Would you recommend them applying to all three or once someone applies, are they now part of your uh, database of, of, of candidates and you then reach out to them if their profile fits and may be able to place them somewhere else? Yeah, great question. Um, so a few different things. So we look at your profile and if it's not, let's say you're not the successful candidate for the role, we do pipeline our, our end as well. It's not just a decline on our end. We do pipeline for other opportunities. Um, but let's say, you know, you do see three different positions that you're interested in. Keep in mind, like banking centers, make sure that it makes sense for you. Back to what Tim said, you want to make sure that your personal life, thinking of like your commute, your family, your life, make sure it makes sense. 
um, and don't just apply because it's another opportunity. Make sure that it's something that you are really passionate, that you'll be able to wake up and go to work every single day or the days that you're scheduled. Um, but, you know, like we don't look at, you know, how many applications you have. We don't see that as something negative. Obviously, there's so many different opportunities out there and you might want to learn about different opportunities. So you put your application in. That is no problem. So my best advice would be, you know, if you do see a few positions that you're interested in, absolutely go ahead and apply for them. You know, even in your conversation, if you are selected and you speak with a talent acquisition partner, um, you can let them know that you've applied to other positions because we will see that on our end. But, you know, you can ask questions about those ones as well. We might not have all of the answers, but again, we can give you advice. We can, you know, pipeline you for those roles, reach out to our colleagues. Um, so don't think that you only have to apply for one position, wait for the response, then go for the next position. All right, um, that's all the time that we have today for questions. So I really thank all the panelists that joined us and, and all the attendees as well for taking uh, time out of your day. Um, if you have any additional questions, uh, you can reach out to us at designations at csi.ca. Um, and uh, we also encourage you to um, look at the courses that we have available, especially the Canadian Securities course at csi.ca forward slash students. Our team at CSI um, is committed to help you along your learning journey. So this session that we have today is going to be the first of many, and we're looking at other resources to help you get the information that you need and help you connect with different employers. Um, so once again, I, I thank everyone for attending and have a wonderful day and we wish you uh, the best of luck um, on your path to a career in, in the financial services industry. Thank you so much.